He's like, Alan, you need to learn how to control your emotions. <laughs> your disruptive influence, the way you behave is not corporate. And he says, and you've got to understand, Alan, how your emotions affect other people. <laughs> Fifteen years later, I wish I could meet him, and I'd look him in the eye, and I'd say, that's a whole bloody point. <laughs> That is what we're here for. So I left. I left right away. When I was out with my donors, we were the most angry. I was with my volunteers, we were the most passionate, driven, committed groups of people in some god awful parts of this country. You know what? Sometimes we drank beer for way too long. Sometimes we smoked cigarettes. Always, my daughter swore. We went to meetings and work people had to meet people who were sitting in clubs and stuff. And they were brilliant, brilliant people. I loved them. And they raised millions and millions and millions. But then I did something really dumb. I spent the next 12 years trying to change myself into that director and be intellectual. Those of you that worked for me over the last 12 years know how badly I used to fail on a pretty much weekly basis. <laughs> and it made me utterly miserable. And then I met the brave fundraising team. I'm going to thank Rosie Chinchin, who's the director of fundraising at the World Society for the Protection of Animals, for the most glorious row in that meeting that you kicked off by saying, Alan, you're really pissing me off. <laughs> yeah? I'm going to thank you for that. Simon Patton, who was then at WSPA. I'm going to thank you for being the first one that picked up a can of beer in that meeting and gave your permission to the rest of your team to do so. And Phil Woolham, I've never thanked you for this, but for the brief, which was, make it happen and don't worry about upsetting you. Thank <laughs> you.